I'm Alison Tandry of DIY Salvation with the first in a series of lectures on TROM theory. The resolution of the mind, also known as TROM is a method of resolving your mental and spiritual condition. It's self-studied, self-applied, and 100% free. Though I am going to do my best to make this presentation palatable for the first-time viewer, I recommend watching the videos on our beginners playlists first so you'll have an easier time following me. For the past year and a half since we started this channel, we've been guiding others towards resolving their minds and increasing their level of spiritual freedom. But what does it mean to be truly free as a spiritual being? What is it that hinders your spiritual freedom and how does one get it back? Today I am going to cover the subjects of voluntary games, compulsive games, postulates, and communication. Once I've done so, I will thoroughly answer this question of what we mean by spiritual freedom and briefly tell you how our program can help you achieve just that. So make sure you listen to this lecture in its entirety. It's a small time commitment which just may change the course of your life. Humans interact in different ways. They have friendly conversations. They have arguments. They play games for fun, like hide-and-go-seek, chess, sports, video games, and so on. But then there are more serious games like fights between individuals, or wars between nations. There are people who agree with our goals and try to help us, and then there are people trying to prevent us from achieving them. There are people who want you to be happy and prosperous, and then there are people who would just as well see you miserable and poor. Life is driven by postulates. A postulate is a desire, a goal, or a purpose. In life we try to make these postulates come true, as in our hopes and dreams, or try to convince others of our postulates, as in our beliefs. If you see a car driving down the road and say to yourself, I'm going to get a car like that, then you've made a postulate. If you hear that car blasting loud music and it annoys you, and you think to yourself, I wish they would turn that damned sound system down, then you've made a postulate. If you want the attention of a member of the opposite sex, you are making a postulate. If you are interested in a subject of study, you make a postulate to learn it. It's not a terribly complicated thing, a postulate. You could just as easily call it an intention and it would suit our purposes in understanding TROM, as well as life in general. To further clarify what a postulate is, let's compare these two statements. The car is red. I want to paint that car blue. The statement that the car is red is not a postulate. It's just an observation. You're wanting the car to be blue instead is your postulate. There are infinite possible postulates one could make. And in life we get agreement with these postulates or resistance to these postulates or both. We want others to help us with our goals. We feel more comfortable around others who have the same convictions we do. All of us are to a greater or lesser degree trying to shape the world and the people around us. And when we aim to influence others, create things, share new ideas, and so on, we meet with resistance. If you overcome that resistance, you win. If the resistance overcomes you, then you've lost. This is life. It's a game. In TROM, we deal primarily with four basic postulates which help us not only resolve the mind, but understand life. These four postulates are to know, to be known, to not know, and to not be known. Every postulate you make carries with it an element of one or more of these four basic postulates. When you see something you want, you want to know it. When you want someone to like you, you want to be known to them. When you don't like someone, you want to not know them. When you are hiding from someone, you want to not be known. When you have a friendly conversation with someone, you want to be known to them. You want them to know you. They want to be known to you, and you in turn know them. When postulates are in agreement with each other, they are known as complementary postulates. I want to clarify that it's complement spelled with an E before the M, and that word means to complete. I don't mean the word compliment with an I before the M which means to say something nice to someone else in admiration. When a postulate is thoroughly complimented, that postulate vanishes. When I want to be known to you, 
and you then know me, my desire for you to know me diminishes. When I want something and I get it, my desire for that thing diminishes. When I get rid of something I don't want around me, it no longer annoys me. The game is over, and the postulate ends with it unless I postulate that same thing again. In contrast to this, we have an argument. I want you to agree with my postulate, and you disagree with it. Either I will convince you that I'm right, or you will convince me that I'm wrong. Or both of us may stop talking to each other, with the conflict unresolved. In voluntary games, you and I agree to have a conflict just to have some fun, like if we were to play chess, or a sport, or something like that. In a compulsive game, the conflict is enforced by one or both parties, and instead of the game ending with a friendly agreement on who wins or who loses, one person forces another to agree with their postulate by overwhelming them with it. If you want to talk to me, but I never answer the phone or return your calls, and then you give up trying to reach me, I overwhelm your postulates to know me and be known to me by not knowing you and not being known to you. Or if I get tired of trying to avoid you, and finally do return your calls, then you have overwhelmed me into agreeing with your postulate to know me and be known to me. Now, if you and I had just agreed to play hide-and-seek, then this would be a voluntary game, and there'd be nothing upsetting about it. But when games like this play out in real life, they become more serious, and we call such compulsive games. Do you see where I am going with this? When you make a postulate, I can agree with it, disagree with it, overwhelm you into agreeing with my postulate instead, or be overwhelmed by yours. Or, the conflict could just continue until the end of time, if only in my mind and in yours. And in this compulsive gameplay, whether I overwhelm you or you overwhelm me or the conflict just continues, is the very thing that glues the soul to the mind, and hinders our happiness, our well-being, and our freedom as spiritual beings. Trom Therapy aims to relieve you of the suffering caused by playing compulsive games in life. You do this by first comparing your past to your present in order to reduce the importance of upsetting people, objects and events. In the advanced levels of trauma, you work on handling times you were overwhelmed by others, or you overwhelmed them. And finally, you explore the postulates you made and the postulates that others made to oppose you. The more you progress up the trauma levels, the less upsetting your past becomes. You gain a better understanding of the games you and others play in life. By thoroughly examining your mind in the way I just described, you will end your compulsion to play games, and enter into a state where games are played voluntarily, or there is no game at all if that's what you prefer. And that is what we mean when we talk about resolving your mind, resolving your spiritual condition, and attaining greater levels of spiritual freedom. I'm Alison Tandry. We are DIY Salvation. Don't just use your mind. Resolve it.